Hey, hey everyone, I am going to do a couple of uh, thread videos, um, two in one. I'm going to combine uh, Glowing Cabbage's thread, the Wacky Records thread with Mixopia's recent thread. Sorry I have to combine it, but um, I want to respond to Glowing Cabbage, but I don't have very many Wacky Records, so um, I only pulled out about, I think, three, so um, that's not enough for one video, so I'm just going to combine it with Mixopies, but um, I love these two threads I'm going to do. Great ideas, guys, and um, so, so first of all, I'll do Glowing Cabbages first. Um, I don't, Wacky Records aren't something I really buy a lot of. Um, I do see them, definitely, but I'm just, I'd rather buy something that I actually want to listen to, but, um, but yes, yeah, so I don't, that's why I don't really buy a lot of novelty records. They are amusing and you know I like the uh, the foreign language translation ones or the learn a foreign language ones you know I always see those especially um, in thrift stores I see a lot of Italian ones here for some reason but um, so but I have pulled out a few and where are they okay first one first wacky record is by this one Rick D's put it where the moon don't shine um, Rick Dees, um, I'm sure you know who he is, but he's a, a, LA, a Los Angeles based uh, radio, top 40 radio DJ. He had a hit in the 70s with this good deck, but this is kind of, I've never listened to this, I don't even know. I found this in the record box, one of the, I don't even know, someone in my family had this for some reason, but um, yeah, I don't know what it sounds like, it's probably really awful. Look at the cover on the toilet there. Um, so. But this was pretty wacky. Okay, next one. I don't even have a uh, record or uh, a plastic sleeve over that, so um, yeah, I don't even care about that one. Next one, same, uh, same. No record sleeve on this one either, but um, it's Society of Seven. Not really wacky, I guess. It's more of a novelty item, but I, th I think I don't know what this is. I never listened to it either, but. I imagine this is like a vac uh, vacation band kind of thing in Hawaii, where you, you know, you you tour around Hawaii, and then there's some traditional Hawaiian band there, and you can buy the record and stuff. I think that's what this is, but this is autographed. So it's funny to see autographed records, but uh, like on you see this in thrift stores sometimes. With will be autographed records are from from just you know nobody's just. Stuff like that, this novelty stuff like that. It's funny, I think. So, yeah. Um, okay, the next one is not a record; it's a CD. Um, they do have a record of this, though, and I would actually buy this if I saw it because I really like it. Actually, it's really cool. Um, but I got this when I was a kid, and it's um, the Simpsons singing the blues. This is actually on Geffen Records in 1990. I think this was the first album that the TV show had released. Um, I have a couple of other. Simpson compilations, but this one's just kind of wacky because it's this, you know, specific genre, the blues, so, and it's kind of funny because it has, let me see, it has, uh, B.B. King's on it, and Joe Walsh, um, Buster Poindexter, uh, um, this with David Johansson right, from, uh, New York Dolls, um, Tower Power, um, well, the horn section at least, and John Sebastian, Roger McGuinn, so you know, uh, a lot of a um, lot of uh, talent on here. Um, has some born under has some standards like born under a bad sign. God bless the child. Um, yeah. So and has to do the Bartman. The not really blues, but that was kind of a hit, kind of a rap song, I guess. But all right, so. There are the Rocky Records for you, and that actually took four minutes. Well, it's surprising, but so now I'm gonna move on to Mixopi's thread. Let me pull that up. Um, okay, best albums to really test the stereo system. I've never really done this, um, but if I would do that, because like my dad uses this CD a lot to uh, to test his the limits on the, our stereo, but. Um, on his stereo at least, but this one, the, the, I'd probably use this one, I've shown this, this is the third time I'm going to show this by the way, so, sorry, but, this record, Live Rust by Neil Young and Crazy Horse, I just think it's a good, not that, that this is a great album, but, 
it just sounds really good loud, I've noticed. So, um, that one, and then I pulled out, um, any jazz record would work, but I would say this one, Made in Voyage by Herbie Hancock. I don't know, just, just like the way this one sounds a lot, so, but any jazz record would really work, but try that one especially, um, okay, but that's not really my field, um, stereos and stuff, I'm not really into that, you know, I don't know much about stereo systems and, and things like that, so, okay, next question, an album that you can't stand that you like, okay, I need to explain first that growing up, up in, up until this band reunited, they were my all-time favorite band. I've definitely lost interest in them since, but I tried to follow them after the, after the reunion. But it's the Smashing Pumpkins. They just mean so much to me. I've one of the my favorite one of the first albums I ever heard when I was a kid um, in the '90s. So um, was was Simon Stern, that's the album I heard. But I just can't stand that. I really like this record, just because I hated that they reunited so much. And uh, nobody, I mean, nobody really like this record, I don't think. I mean, the true fans, I guess, did, but I do like this record, and um, that's the way my love is. It's a classic track already, I mean, and uh, love the heaviness of this record, too. So, um, but yeah, stupid that they reunited to me, and it's even worse now since Billy Corgan's the only original member, and it's all new members, and I didn't like this lineup a lot, but now I kind of wish this lineup was back instead of the new lineup. Um, of course, I wish it was the old members, but that's not going to happen, but, um, so, an album you can't stand it, you like, Zeitgeist by the Smashing Pumpkins, uh, 2007, so, um, it was fun waiting around for this to be released, though, I must say. Okay. How about, uh, I have another addition to that, a band that you can't stand that you like, um, because I hate this band a lot, like, I'm one, it's like one of those things, but, because they're, they have some songs that are on my absolute hate list, um, especially their more rock or more upbeat songs. But it's the Eagles. Um, but their ballads are just excellent. Every time I hear a ballad, I'm like, why do I always say I hate the Eagles? Because their ballads are just amazing. Um, so, but I don't have anything by them. But anyway, kind of off. But okay, uh, best albums to play on a Sunday morning. Okay, um, a couple. I actually have a few. First, if you're on a, if you're kind of on the gloomy Sunday kind of mode, um, uh, you know how Sundays can feel sometimes. Looking forward to the whole week, you know. But say so this, I don't have this was never really some violence, so off the hook. But it's lows I can I could live in hope. And oh, also by the way, Zeitgeist was never released on vinyl too, and I'd be really cool if they released it. But um, so this is low I can live in hope. Um, which I wish this would be released on vinyl too, because it's my favorite record by them. If you don't know Low, they're just uh, so-called you know slowcore. If you don't, if you haven't checked out slowcore, check that out. It's just really slow, obviously really slow and depressing. Just guitar, uh, clean guitar indie rock from the pretty much from the 90s. But I just love this because there's three members and two of them sing. It's a guy and a girl. Um, but the woman on this record, her name is Mimi Parker. She just has the most so like soothing and beautiful voice I've ever heard. So, really good kind of Sunday, still in bed kind of record. Um, this one, to this album, is because when I was a kid, and even still sometimes today, when I when I'm up early, um, I like to you know listen to music, and the Smashing Pumpkins were always a band that I would listen to when I would wake up. Um, don't know why, but it kind of reminds me of Sunday morning, so, um, definitely that record, and some other, other, other stuff too, but, and then, Sundays is a good day to do homework and stuff, you know, um, so I like to play this in the background. Music for Airports with Brian Eno. Great, groundbreaking, influential, ambient record. 1978 on EG Records. Um, yeah. Um, Brian Eno is just a genius, so. Makes perfect sense in my music. Okay, so I have. That's that question. First concert you went to? Well, it's kind of a late bloom around concerts. I didn't, the first one I, I went to was my sophomore year in high school. Um, 
my sister wanted to go, so I accompanied her. But I did really want to go. But um, it was Coldplay, um, and Fiona Apple was opening. But um, I actually really love Coldplay. They're probably the best. I think they're the, probably the best mainstream alternative rock band. They're just really good songwriters, and they have so much atmosphere in their in the, the production and stuff. So, um, but I especially love the first couple of the first few records though mainly but so that, that was the first show I went to and it was really great and cool to see Fiona Apple that's an unexpected surprise I didn't even know she was opening at the time so uh yeah next best concert uh tough one um hmm um I would s I don't know if I have a specific favorite but I would right now I would say my buddy Valentine um Probably the best reunion I've ever se reunion show I've ever seen. It was so loud. The wall of sound went on for like you know, 25 minutes or so. It was just crazy, and I was right there in the front, and it was just everyone that attended was so nice, and everyone was just kind of talking to each other. They knew that it was just a huge crazy event, so really fun. Um, and uh, yeah, was, I'm so glad I got to see that. I hope they play again so I can see them again, but. Um, yeah, so, also I looked, I saw the Pavement and Guided by Voices reunion shows, those were fun. Um, not a fan of reunions, I would rather not have them reunite, but it was a fun show, and, um, yeah, it was fun, and I um, also, like, I've seen Stereo Lab twice, and they're really great live, and, uh, I just had a lot of fun at this show, not so much the, the, sh the show itself, but just the people I met and stuff, so, okay, um. But for show what like music wise and stuff, I would definitely say my buddy Valentine. Just for the noise factor, that was crazy. Okay, best live album. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, fourth time. Forgot I was gonna show this again, but oh, live rest. Don't need to explain why. And uh, okay, I don't have many, very many live albums, but um, yeah, I need to get. Th there are a lot of live albums I do want to get, but I just don't really acquire them. But um, let me show you one more I forgot. This one's really cool. Uh, it's a 10 inch record. It's an acoustic live album by Aztec Camera. Um, it's a new wave indie pop band from the 80s. Um, this is a mainly acoustic set, and it has a uh, cover of Van Halen's Jump, so it's really cool. And it's such a great, they're such a great live band, so. I just wanted to show that really quick. One of my favorite bands, so. And what genres do you think you're missing most of? Um, I need to get some reggae and ska. I need some more two-tone records, the, the, record label, the ska, like, ska record label. And I want to get some reggae, because I uh, never was really into reggae, but I've been getting into it more recently, especially the Lover's Rock. Because um, I don't like, I don't, I'm not a fan of political and social lyrics, so that's why I never was attracted to reggae. But I love the Lovers Rock. I've discovered that, and uh, yeah, so I want to get you know, Gregory Isaacs and um, Mark D. Dredd, but uh, although he does political stuff too. But but uh, anyway, uh, so um, can't say any genre I want to get into because I'm pretty much into everything. But I do would would love to get some more reggae vinyl and explore certain uh, types of reggae in detail. So, uh, but there's the thread. I hope you guys enjoy it and. Uh, Great stuff, guys, and uh, talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching, everyone, and please comment and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.